As we head into month three of this global pandemic, we are about to see a massive wave of evictions in the United States. And I'm not sure what's more of a shocking statement, right? That, that over 20 million Americans are probably going to be evicted or that it's only been three months of this crisis. I mean, it feels like 700 years, right? The before times seemed like a hazy, distant memory where we were able to drink our booze, you know, use, use public restrooms without any care in the world and put our tongues on lampposts without concern, right? But now uh, we're all just mostly stuck inside contemplating whether we want to wear pants or if we should just let it all hang out. Now, in the beginning of this crisis, most civilized nations decided to buffer their citizens with direct cash payments or implemented some kind of universal basic income. In America, as the unemployment rate was rising, the so-called Liberal Party of Democrats was assessing whether giving its citizens financial assistance was a good thing or not. They landed on or not uh, and decided that the banks really can't pull themselves up by their bootstraps and need that $5 trillion bailout. And the rich can't really pull themselves up by anything because, you know, they just manicured their nails and Botox their fingers. Now, some jobs were able to pivot into the digital landscape, but some jobs were not that lucky. So a lot of Americans got furloughed or had their hours and wages cut or lost their jobs entirely. Even the people that were living semi-comfortably making five or six figures ended up struggling throughout this time. And most of those folks, the only reason they can live a semi-comfortable life is because they don't have a savings account. Which really goes to show that the cost of things are way too damn high, even when you make five to six figures and can't have a financial safety net. Look, high wire trapeze acts are risking their lives and they have a safety net. But the average working American that has a job at an IT department can't. I think we need to unplug and replug this economy because it's stopped functioning. The folks on unemployment will be losing those benefits at the end of July. It was also reported that the people uh, were making more with unemployment benefits than they were at their actual job. This, of course, led to conservatives claiming the welfare state will make us all lazy. But the real issue is the fact that people should be paid better for working their asses off. I mean, why isn't the conversation about the American working class should be making at least $1,200 a week at minimum? That's $30 an hour, which is double the minimum wage progressives are trying to achieve. And that's because the progressive movement has been talking about a $15 minimum wage since the Clinton era. The, the one that got a, a blowjob, not the one that didn't get any jobs. Now, according to their, the chair of the American Bar Association's Task Force Committee on Evictions, Emily Benfer pointed out that during the 2008 housing crisis, about 10 million Americans lost their homes due to the banks crushing the economy like a frat boy crushing a middle of light can on his head. And then getting bailed out by the, by, by the United States government, also like a frat boy that crushed that Miller Lite can in front of a cop in a Walmart parking lot. Now, with, the un with unemployment's benefits ending and the moratoriums on debt coming to an end, the prediction is up to 28 million Americans might become homeless by September of 2020. Cities like Memphis are seeing 9,000 eviction cases. Look, in a time where a lot of people can't work or pivot into a digital landscape, threatening to take away someone's home is not just callous, but it's idiotic. I mean, SARS-CoV-2, the virus that causes COVID-19, is spreading rapidly through homeless communities, and there are very few doctors and services available to help them with this. So creating more homeless to spread the disease even faster isn't a productive way to get out of the pandemic. With, 
with the nation approaching an economic calamity worse than the Great Depression, who do you really think is going to be able to rent your one-bedroom apartment with a semi-functioning fridge and no utilities covered? And these eviction hearings are happening over Zoom, which you need the internet to attend. And if you don't have a roof over your head, where are you going to go to access the wonders of the internet? Right? Coffee shops aren't open. And I doubt Starbucks is keeping its Wi-Fi on when they don't have hipsters coming in to work on their reboot script of the Hitch franchise. But instead of Will Smith, now it's a lady. Because, you know, like progress and stuff. Look, even if they were able to attend these hearings, in 99% of the cases, the courts side with the landlord because capitalism is more important than human decency. Now, evictions aren't the norm everywhere, right? For landlords that outright own their buildings and properties, uh, they've personally been working with tenants to ensure that they don't feel pressured to pay when they can't. This involves both residential and commercial properties, right? Some landlords are working with tenants to create a payment, which is nice, uh, but it's a temporary solution, right? The payment plans still puts tenants who are in a financial bind in the trappings of debt. It's like a minimum security prison, right? It's nice that you get to go out twice a day, but you're still kind of in prison. A more permanent solution is a rent and mortgage cancellations altogether, right? In New York, the Democratic state representative, Yulin New, I, and I hope I pronounced that properly. If I didn't, I'm so sorry. Uh, but she's proposed the Rent and Mortgage Cancellation Act of 2020, which does exactly what the name suggests. It cancels rent for renters and mortgages for small families dur for the duration of the pandemic, plus 90 days. Now, I'm sure there's some people out there saying, Plop, plus 90 days. Uh, I mean, why, why don't we just give the homes away at this point? And that isn't a bad idea, but it's not the point of the 90 day extension. Look, once this pandemic is over, there will be a, a transition period for all of us to get back on our get back up to speed. Right. We might need new jobs, new passions, new spouses. This 90 days gives people enough time to get both feet planted on the ground before the banks try to pull the rug from underneath us again. But what the banks don't realize is that with the amount of time we've had on our hands, we've become super awesome at backflips. And also judo. Uh, also, we're, we're pretty, pretty good at judo now. This legislation also has a relief fund for landlords, so those that are indebted to banks don't have to be concerned about foreclosures on their properties. Legislation like this is thinking in the long term to ensure that we don't repeat the same crisis we saw 12 years ago. It ensures that we don't repeat history and keep it in an abusive relationship with human greed. History's really not that into greed, right? And broke up with it a, a bunch of different times, but greed just keeps showing up at history's house with a boombox over its head playing its favorite song. Okay, come on, greed. You gotta get a hint. Go home, okay? You gotta go home. We're gonna get a restraining order. But Democratic pandemic bad boy Andrew Cuomo has said that this is too radical of an approach and he prefers a more moderate approach. You know, he's got a very sensible approach of telling renters to shut the fuck up and pay what they owe so his billionaire buddies can keep vacationing in the Finger Lakes with their massive, massive tax cuts. His moderate policy is called Die in the Street for Capitalism Act of 2020. And because he was able to finish like a basic sentence, he is considered a god to the neoliberals. But because of the pushback from neoliberals and republicans, we've seen the rise of organized tenant unions all across the nation. They're using their rights as tenants to organize rent strikes to ensure the homeless population doesn't go up because of the government's mismanagement of the pandemic. Now, in cities like Denver, the sheriff's offices are still planning on carrying out these eviction orders, but they will be met with the solidarity of the rent strike. 
And this is a movement for landlords to get involved in as well, right? They can, they can call a, a, a mortgage strike and push back against the banks. Rather than be against the tenants, they can join the fight for better housing rights. There are some landlords like the one in Denver called uh, the Olive Bark Apartment Complexes that claim that people should have a rainy day fund. Look, at this point, savings accounts, rainy day funds, and picking each other by our bootstraps are for the privileged. 80% of Americans live paycheck to paycheck, and even if they make large enough incomes, they're still living paycheck to paycheck. Not because they want to, but because the current economic system is so tilted to ensure that the rich get richer and the poor are soaked in the rain. Like, literally. But there are programs in place that currently circumvent these legislative battles and even the forthcoming rent strike. In Utah, the Housing First program has decreased homelessness by 91%. Usually when someone whose heart has shrunk three sizes based on the increase in their paycheck sees a homeless person, they say, Oh, get, you get a job. Ah, you, get the, you get a job, you son of a bitch. But... You can't get a job if you don't have a stable place to live, a permanent address, transportation, and other luxuries that us jobbed people have in comparison to the homeless. So in Utah, the Housing First program gave homeless people homes to help them get a proper footing in their life. In Utah, these folks are assigned to a caseworker who helps them adjust to uh, to this new way of living, right? To their new lives, and then helps them get a job as well as mental and physical health services. Now, after 10 years of this program, 91% of the former homeless are still housed. The, the, the same model exists in Finland as well. And on a yearly basis, the state of Utah saves $5,000 per homeless person by implementing the Housing First program. When you don't have to pay cops to beat them, ambulances to take them to jail, and then the, the jail itself, you wind up saving a ton of money. And it turns out just being a decent human being and providing the downtrodden with some help is actually way more financially beneficial. And apparently Utah is America's Finland when it comes to the homeless. And yet again, it looks like conservatism in other parts of the world it are outlefting most Democrats in America. UK's Prime Minister and Combe protester Boris Johnson is claiming to protect renters and landlords from the economic fallout of this pandemic. There is no reason for the federal or state governments to decline legislation that cancels rents and mortgages for the American working class. When they choose not to, under the guise of being moderate or the economy, they're choosing to punish the populace for a problem we did not create. This adds more stress and mental fatigue to an already fatigued class of people. So, in turn, the American government, using housing as a point of crisis, has become a he public health issue just as bad as this virus. The cure is pretty simple. Create housing first programs to get ahead of the impending eviction epidemic and cancel rents and mortgages. And that has been your dispatch for this week. Thank you so much for tuning in. Uh, hey, I've got some really great live virtual stand-up comedy shows coming up. If you're a fan of socially conscious, independently released, independently produced stand-up comedy shows, then you'll probably be a big fan of my Citizen Revolution comedy shows. Uh, each week we tackle a brand new topic. There's no material uh, that is repeated, so if you want to come to multiple Citizen Revolution shows, you will get a brand new show every single time. Plus, I donate half my ticket sales to a grassroots organization. The next one coming up is July 17th. That's tomorrow, July 17th, 9 p.m. Eastern, 6 p.m. Pacific. Half the sales will be going to Pittsburgh Mutual Aid to help people get groceries um, and uh, various other sorts of community-based financial efforts. Uh, they're going to be the, the, the folks that I'm going to be donating uh, half my ticket sales to. Following those shows, I'll be heading into August. 
I've got uh, another Citizen Revolution show lined up for August 7th, August 14th, and August 28th. More dates will be added pretty soon. But I'm also doing a variety of fringe festivals this year as well. Uh, the most, uh, the, the next one being uh, Fringe PVD, Fringe Providence, Providence, Rhode Island's Fringe Festival on July 30th and 31st at 6 p.m. Eastern. I will be doing a version of the Citizen Revolution live virtual stand-up comedy show. So get your tickets for all of these shows right now. All of the information is available right on my website at krishmohanhaha.com. That's K-R-I-S-H-M-O-H-A-N-H-A-H-A dot com. Uh, and while you're there, you can uh, pick up a, a copy of my brand new album, Politely Angry, which is available on all of the streaming and downloading platforms from Pandora to iTunes to Google Play, wherever you like to listen to your music. But it's also available on Bandcamp for just one dollar for a single dollar it's available on Bandcamp um, that way no one gets priced out if you want to pay a little bit more you totally can but you totally don't have to um, I just want people that uh, that want to enjoy some socially conscious comedy uh, that want to enjoy some long-form comedy that addresses uh, you know sociopolitical topics that you don't normally hear on mainstream uh, comedy networks uh, you know uh, the, what what I consider true political comedy uh, you can do so without any sort of financial restrictions so it's available on my bandcamp for just one dollar uh, you can pretty much get all of my albums off bandcamp all of my albums are available on all these streaming platforms Platforms as well um, and uh, the other thing you can do on my website is become a sustaining member or make a one-time donation uh, sustaining members get uh, little perks a couple different little perks uh, you get free tickets to those citizen revolution shows you get unreleased stand-up comedy and storytelling content uh, and you get um, you get special uh, merch that I'm trying to work out uh, some special merch situations as well. Uh, so, so if you become a sustaining member, you get to, you get that, and you get advanced copies of any album that I release in the future. You get you're you're the first ones to get it. Uh, you're the first ones to listen to it and talk about it and all that fun stuff. So, if you want to be part of that, if you want to be part of the, that community, there's a bunch of different cool things that you get by being a sustaining member. Uh, you can go to, once again, krishmohanhaha.com. That's K-R-I-S-H-M-O-H-A-N-H-A-H-A.com. Uh, and uh, you can grab your tickets. You can grab uh, a, a copy of my album. Check out uh, episodes of, uh, of this podcast, Forkful of Noodles, videos, stand-up clips, and become a sustaining member and make donations. Once again, go to krishmohanhaha.com. That's K-R-I-S-H-M-O-H-A-N-H-A-H-A.com. Now, on to this week's episode. Enjoy.